Good evening. It's Facebook love. How are you? It's been a beautiful blue sky day. It's clouding up a little. Spring is definitely with us. I had the most wonderful long walk with my guys today, this morning, with Craig and young John. And we went over to the lakefront and we're surrounded by flowering trees and people walking their dogs, everybody honestly being quite polite and keeping far from each other, doing as we ought. Um, so that was lovely and a, a great way to start another busy day. Um, I don't understand uh, personally the whole like, I have nothing to do, I'm bored thing because it hasn't happened. There hasn't been a day like that. Um, between work and just projects and creativity and trying to deal with the emotions of all this. Um, I haven't had that. So uh, being outside with my feet touching the earth is a wonderful thing. I've been uh, pondering as always and um, the thing that's been preoccupying me is what do we do when we feel like things are falling apart? Um, and I've had some lovely things sent to me and shared with me and, and I've stumbled over some other things besides all the wonderful poems. Um, one of them was a lovely piece uh, an old friend sent me um, about the idea that I feel like I'm falling apart. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm disintegrating. and. Um, I do feel like that sometimes uh, when all the things that give my life some structure feel like they're going away. Um, and this one reading was about how you're not falling apart, you're losing pieces that aren't essential so that you are getting more and more toward your center and growing toward what you ought to be more of which is a lovely image. Um, and then tonight, instead of reading a poem, um, I'm gonna read some selections, some quotes from uh, Pema Chodron, who is a Buddhist nun. Uh, but before I do that, uh, another thing that came upon me as I was discussing with other friends uh, who are singers, um, talking about the idea that when you're in crisis or or just overwhelmed, it's really hard to sing. Um, it's hard for me and it's been hard for them at times. Uh, and we were talking about the chakras and, and we, we have a, a big energy center here in our voices. Um, and if you know the main chakras, we have red, root, orange, uh, creation, yellow, power center, emerald, your heart, cobalt or sapphire, your throat, uh, this beautiful amethyst at your third eye, and then this like shot through diamond with lilac amethyst in your crown. And um, at times of great crisis, I, I have a lot of trouble singing. <clears throat> and I've been working on just making sound and not worrying about singing songs. Um, but when we have anxiety, grief, fear, it is hard to voice. So I've been thinking about that. And then I saw and, and listened to an interesting piece uh, this writer, creator today that I was listening to was talking about how she's built a fort in her spare bedroom with yarn and sheets and put Christmas white lights inside and a lamp. And she set up her laptop and that's how she does her video conferencing from this fort. Um, and that it's become like a portal out to others. So I'm not gonna hang sheets in here, but I thought I'd use that image that this spare room that I use that I call the reading room is the portal out. So those are nice. And they help. So, um, back to reading tonight. These are some
quotes and, and uh, things that Pema Chodron has said. I hope I'm not mispronouncing her name. Uh, she has a book called When Things Fall Apart, Heart Advice for Difficult Times. And one of the primary quotes is, only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible be found in us. There's no way but through. Uh, so I just want to read a few things that she has said. Um, this is a little prelude. She draws on her own confrontation with personal crisis and on the ancient teachings of Tibetan Buddhism to offer gentle and incisive guidance to the enormity we stand to gain during those times when all seems to be lost. Half a century after Albert Camus asserted that, quote, there is no love of life without despair of life, Pema Chodron reframes those moments of acute despair as opportunities for befriending life by befriending ourselves in the deepest sense. Writing in that Buddhist way of wrapping in simple language the difficult and beautiful truths of existence, she examines the most elemental human response to the uncharted territory that comes with loss or any other species of unforeseen change. She writes, fear is a universal experience. Even the smallest insect feels it. We wade in the tidal pools and put our finger near the soft, open bodies of sea anemones and they close up. Everything spontaneously does that. It's not a terrible thing that we feel fear when faced with the unknown. It is part of being alive, something we all share. We react against the possibility of loneliness, of death, of not having anything to hold on to. Fear is a natural reaction to moving closer to the truth. If we commit ourselves to staying right where we are, then our experience becomes very vivid. Things become very clear when there is nowhere to escape. This clarity, she argues, is a matter of becoming intimate with fear and rather than treating it as a problem to be solved, using it as a tool with which to dismantle all of our familiar structures of being. Quote, a complete undoing of old ways of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and thinking. She notes that bravery is not the absence of fear, but the intimacy with fear. Chadron says, when we really begin to do this, we're going to be continually humbled. There's not going to be much room for the arrogance that holding on to ideals can bring. The arrogance that inevitably does arise is going to be continually shot down by our own courage to step forward a little further. The kinds of discoveries that are made through practice have nothing to do with believing in anything. They have much more to do with having the courage to die, the courage to die continually. In essence, this is the hard work of befriending ourselves, which is our only mechanism for be befriending life in its completeness. completeness. That's a hard word to say. Out of that, Pema Chodron argues, arises our deepest strength. Only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation 
can that which is indestructible be found in us? I'll finish with this. Things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem. But the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, for relief, for misery, and for joy. There's a lot more. It's a whole book. What this reading did for me today as my poems that I share, that other people wrote, and my own poems when I finish them do for me, is remind me over and over that our life and our living is a good teacher. And this very hard thing that we're all experiencing together, this trauma, wherever it leads us is teaching us. And maybe my anxiety and my fear are teaching me that it's okay to stay in uncertainty and to accept it. So I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna write, and I'm gonna put on Stevie Wonder, and I'm gonna dance, and I urge you to do the same. This is Facebook Love. I'll see you tomorrow.